and this this notion of call out culture that I mentioned. This is the idea that if someone offends you, rather than private privately bring up the transgression with them to better it, you need to publicly shame them. He mentions that he spoke with a professor who was in class and he couldn't think of a term and he was oh come on, come on, oh, shoot me now. And a student rose her hand and told the professor in front of the entire lecture hall that having, you know, knowing someone that committed suicide or, or had, you know, history of mental illness, she was deeply hurt by the professor saying, shoot me now. And look, I understand if if the student was hurt by that. I really do. And I think that the student could have come to the professor to relay that in a respectful manner. But that's not what call-out culture is. Call-out culture isn't about bettering the environment for everyone. It's not about communicating your concerns. Call-out culture is about getting credit for bringing someone down. You throw up that virtue flag like, I got one on the board, guys. I nailed the professor. I made this a safer place for everybody. This is the environment that the coddling of the American mind amongst young people has created. And you see it, you know, not just in education, you see it in entertainment too. And let me give you a, 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 you know, a great example of this, um, about how severe of a problem this is becoming among young people. At Columbia University last year, a comedian by the name of Nimesh Patel attended um, an event in the fall. He, he was uh, going to do a, a stand-up routine. And he told a joke at Columbia about when he realized that being gay can't possibly be a choice. And he says, he tells an anecdote about meeting a black man who's gay. And he says, no one would choose to be gay if they're already blacked. If they're already black, no one is doubling down on hardship. He told a joke and then he goes on to say something else. You know, uh, a smattering of laughs uh, didn't really resonate with the crowd. A few minutes into the routine, the event organizers actually ushered him off the stage. And they told him in front of the entire crowd of a couple hundred kids that his jokes were disrespectful and his set would have to end early. Patel left peacefully. He didn't put up a fight. And he ended up penning an op-ed in the New York Times that wrote last, uh, ran last December, and I'll include it in the detail section, about his experience and what he learned about you know the culture of on college campuses. Granted, there was pushback. There were Columbia students who reached out to apologize, who said they didn't agree with him, you know, being kicked out. And um, but certainly, this is not new in the comic industry in 2019. Uh, the comedian Bill Burr um, was one of my, I think he's laugh out loud funny. He's he's uh, he played uh, what's his face on Breaking Bad, not Huel, the the other guy, Kubi, I think. Um, but he's he's, a, he's an amazing comedian from Boston, and he refers to this phenomenon as outrage culture. And he did a he did an appearance on the Joe Rogan Experience, really great, probably my favorite podcast, back in December twentieth of twenty eighteen. You can watch it on YouTube. And he make you know he went into detail on outrage culture and and how he sees outrage culture manifesting itself in comedy. And he mentioned that a lot of his fellow comics will go on Twitter now. And they'll post what jokes you can and cannot make on certain topics. Which is, I mean, it's beyond ludicrous that these 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 guys are on their white, uh, their high horse. These these co- these comics dictating what is and is not appropriate to include in in a comedy set. And in true Bill Burr fashion, he he says Bill Burr said on the Joe Rogan podcast that progressives today have this mindset of think the way we think. Say what we want you to say or we will fucking destroy you. Case in point, this is an example that Bill Barr gives. A woman on Twitter pointed out um, uh, a couple months ago that she would never vote for a candidate who was either a white person or a male. A man who was an adjunct uh, professor at Boston College responded to her viewpoint and he said, hey, you know what? I think that might be a little bit sexist and racist, which, which it is, right? So the woman blocks him on Twitter. And then calls Boston College and demands that they not have him back as adjunct faculty. Can you believe that? He points out, I mean, Twitter, it's, it's, you know, uh, an open forum. Anyone can respond to anyone. He points out that our viewpoint was sexist and racist, which if the shoe was on the other foot, I mean, people, you know, point these things out all the time if if we're talking about a different demographic. And the woman 
says to herself that because the man had the audacity to have a different opinion, he should lose his job. This is not an isolated incident. It happens all the time. And this is not just PC culture. It is outrage culture. I am outraged. I have all this anger and outrage and I have nowhere to funnel it. And I am going to funnel it at you because you committed a moral transgression. It is the fight for the moral high ground. When someone says that they're offended by something you say, suddenly they ascend onto this ped- pedestal of morality. You know, you begin looking up, you're craning your neck, oh, it, it hurts, you're leaning back. They ascend to this pedestal of morality that they're the only one who possesses the standards for what's right and what's wrong, and you violated their code somehow. And they're outraged, and any action that they take as a result, in this case, the woman trying to get the man fired, is, is justified. And, you, you know, you might be wondering, how do these people have power? You know, why... why why give them a pulpit? Why give them a forum? Why not just ignore these people? And the reason why this is so effective, this is something Bill Burr also says on the podcast, is that corporations and universities and educational institutions, they're terrified of outrage culture. Uh, Burr says, the corporate entities are so afraid that one fucking nickel is going to roll out the door because, because all this shit is that you're a paper tiger. You're just a paper tiger until you get the big behemoth to listen to you. Until you get the attention of of a school or a company or corporation. Hey, hey, pointing your finger. This guy over here, he, he did something bad. And just so we're clear, I'm not saying that when a school or a company dissolves their partnership with someone, it's not justified. It's never justified. Obviously, if a baseball player commits sexual assault or is convicted of a crime or something concerning from their past resurfaces and they lose their endorsement, that's a million percent justified. That happens all the time. You know, look at you know, look at what what happened in Hollywood last year. Excuse me, with the Me Too movement. Um, certainly, a lot of those men, uh, you know their their careers were effectively ended as a result of the transgressions they committed that's that's warranted i mean these people um you know they they committed egregious egregious acts and that is not what i'm talking about i'm talking about when someone says something that may not adhere a hundred percent to the always evolving impossible to reach standard of what is politically correct they shouldn't have their job security questioned as a result of that 